All right, welcome back everyone. This is our second activity in the bioprinting series. Today we're gonna to be making some sodium alginate rings by cross-linking our, our gel with calcium chloride. And to do this, all we really need to do is we need to develop our geometry in some way. In this case, we're doing it manually. And then expose the sodium alginate to the calcium chloride and the calcium chloride will stiffen and kind of transition that gel into a solid. Not a very strong solid, but a solid. So let's see what we need just to get started here. We're gonna need calcium chloride. This is a 0.5% solution, but anything from around 0.1% to one or 2% will work okay with this. The higher the percentage, the quicker this experiment should proceed. We've got some of our sodium alginate syringes. These are from the previous activities, and I've labeled these ones. This one is a 2% sodium alginate. Any of the ones that we've made in our previous activity will work fine, and you actually don't need very much of these solutions. So if you uh, haven't done the previous activity, you can pre-make just one or two of these syringes and use them for a fairly large number of experiments in this activity. I've also got some guides here, and I'm gonna use these to help me keep track of my individual experiments, as well as to make sure that the circles that I'm making, the rings that I'm making, are of consistent size, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna note, I'll just make myself group one, And I'm going to do a 2% alginate and a 0.5% calcium chloride. Once we've got that noted down, I'm going to take my Petri dish and put it right on top of my guide. I'm going to take my sodium alginate and put a dispensing tip. So this is a like a needle, except for it doesn't have a point. It's got a blunt point needle. Um, and this one is a 20 gauge needle. And it has a lure lock on that, so that way it will screw on to the end of my syringe. Just like that. And I'm gonna draw my circles onto this guide. I do want that to be as consistent as I can make it. So if you have any gaps or any very thin spots on your circle, you can go back and fill it in and try and make it as consistently the same size all the way around the ring as possible. And you can do that for all three rings on the guide. Now you do want to take a look at that, and again, we're trying to make them as consistent as possible. So if you see any spots, or if one of your rings is quite a bit larger than the other ones, go back in and try and make them fairly consistent. My first one here is actually quite a bit smaller than my second two, so I'm going to fill it in a little bit more. Once you're happy with your circles and you've got them all reasonably consistent, put your syringe to the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross-link these rings and I'm going to time how long they're in the calcium chloride. And then I'm going to measure the strength by putting some weights. In this case, I've got nuts, but washers or any kind of reasonably light rings that you can stack onto my paper clips here will work just fine. Okay, so I'm going to get my timer ready. And then I'm going to carefully pour some of my calcium chloride on top of my rings. I'm actually going to pour it kind of close to the middle of the ring. I just want to get just enough to cover the ring completely. I don't want to disturb the placement too much. 
All right. And you can see it's starting to float up in a couple places there, but I'm going to time this. I'm going to let it sit for one minute. As I get close to that one minute mark, I'm going to go ahead and take my guide out from underneath my sample. I'm going to take my paper clip, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the edge of my first ring, and then I'm also going to take a second paper clip, which I'm going to use to put the weights on, and I'm going to try and get that through a hole in my ring, so I'm not breaking it. I'm going to hang this on the edge of my testing rig here. And what I do is I want to see how many of my weights I can hang from this ring before it breaks. There's one. Try and be careful not to disturb it too much as you place it. So that's seven. So that was 11 weights on that first trial. Now I'm going to take the paper towel, dispose of the broken ring, and I'm going to write down on my tracking sheet that I got 1 minute and 11 weights. I'm going to take these off. And I'm now I'm going to add uh, three and a half minutes. So I can either wait till four minutes or just go ahead and start. It's probably going to take me a second to get this written down. So I'm just going to head say four minutes for my next trial. Get my hook out. Wait till I'm at four minutes. Just so that number is accurate. All right. Again, I'm going to suspend right here. I'm going to try and raise this up just a tiny bit and start loading. Try not to let it spin too much because that will weaken it. I am pausing for just a second after adding each weight to make sure that it's stable before I add the next one. If you run out of room on your paper clip, you can always put a second paper clip on and then load that one as well. All right, so that's the end of the first one. I'm going to take a second to count these out. Seventeen. All right. We're almost to seven minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and write down seven minutes on my next sheet. Get ready with a second paper clip here. I might not need it, but we'll see. All right, so that's seven minutes. Let's go ahead and get our main clip. And we'll start loading. I'm just going to go ahead and load a couple of them on here because I'm pretty sure there's a whole at least a few. And notice that this is not perfect because there's quite a bit of kind of blobs there. Five. Let's see if we can't get our second 
Put a clip on there. Do want that second one to hang down below the first one a little bit so that way I have room to put on the weights. Ooh. All right, let's count those out. Twenty-seven. So we can see that from this one, we were obviously able to hold more weight as we let the rings cure longer in the calcium chloride. And that's because the longer it sits, the more of the sodium alginate is able to be cross-linked. You're not going to get a perfectly repeatable result for this every single time, mostly because you're not going to be able to draw perfect rings. Um, and so you're going to have some defects in some of your rings as you go through this. So if you get one that breaks early, don't worry about it. This is a really important aspect of doing any kind of experiments is that we need replicates. So this card just becomes one piece of data. You would want to repeat this experiment with all the different group members uh, in your class and even doing the same concentration of calcium and or calcium chloride and alginate multiple times so that way you have some idea as to what the repeatability of that is. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.